Hey everyone, I just want to quickly say I am actually sick at the moment, so do forgive me if I sound a little different right now, but Avatar is a franchise that I really enjoy, so I didn't want to skip out on an opportunity to share with you my impressions after I actually got to play Frontiers of Pandora, the new game set to release on the 7th of December 2023. It's thanks to Ubisoft that I got to play roughly two hours of the game, although this was through an online event, so there was some streaming delays and it's never a perfect experience when that happens, although I did get a good grip on what the game plays like, how questing works, various gameplay features, and just in general what it has to offer us. What I essentially played was a short slice of the game spanning across a few different quests with a bit of time to explore in between. I didn't have access to everything or the whole map, but it was a big enough area for at least the two hours of playtime I had, and sadly I cannot show any menus, which means I can't show the map, the skills, and all that kind of stuff, but what I can say is that the map was covered in fog, and if the fog areas are in the full game, it was a pretty ginormous world. In the demo that I played, I was essentially dropped into the world in the middle of the jungle to figure things out. It meant that I got to explore a bunch of the map, gathering different fruits and materials, completing several different quests, including the climbing of a rookery to bond with an Ikran, using that new flying mount friend to explore the skies and attack enemies, as well as a final attack mission on a human outpost. First up, I'm going to start with the world itself, including the different layers of things that go into that, like the music, the atmosphere, graphics, and wildlife. This is make or break for me when we're talking about Avatar, a franchise that is all about the amazing and unique world of Pandora, which in the movies has some really incredible areas, scenes, creatures, and culture. Now, I certainly haven't played enough of the game to make any final decisions, but overall, I was impressed with how the world actually is executed. Graphically, it looked pretty good. Good. you can see the gameplay footage here and while I was playing it there was pixelation from the streaming service but the actual gameplay does look pretty nice. The fauna and flora really does make the world feel quite alive and dense. Interacting with other Navi was pretty interesting too and felt very immersive and there seems to be new clans that we will experience. And the music was definitely top notch if you find yourself really enjoying the musical scores from the movies. It certainly all fits in thematically and makes you feel like you are in Pandora. The graphics and overall atmosphere were good. I think it's going to be a lot of fun exploring this whole map, especially if you really do love the franchise. So overall, I was impressed by just the visuals, the glowing plants, the different fauna and flora that the world had to offer. But now let's talk a bit about the gameplay. There was a variety of different weapons that you can use from Navi more primal weapons to the RDA's more advanced weapons, offering a more primitive or advanced option depending on how you want to fight. I didn't get to experience all of them, but the RDA's M69 assault rifle was pretty powerful and felt good to use, although it did run out of ammo quite often. Meanwhile, the different bow options for the Navi felt pretty nice and tactile, but again you did run out of ammo quite a lot, so you will have to be doing a lot of gathering to then craft those ammo types. There was also a skill tree with a load of different upgrade paths for different things, including combat upgrades, hunting, crafting, and more, but again I can't show that. And going back to the crafting of ammo types, there is quite an in-depth crafting system in the game, as you can make new gear and weapons with all different rarities, different ammo types for those weapons, and even a cooking system where you combine together different resources that you've foraged out in the world to create buffs for yourself that also extend your stamina. All of this is done through gathering items in the world or harvesting them off of dead or slain enemies and creatures, so it really does feel like you're a hunter-gatherer. Within our demo, there was two random encounters that we could experience and I got to experience them both once each. One was to soothe a wild animal that had been darted by the marines, which was a nice immersive touch, although it wasn't really anything too special. The other was to free a trapped animal that was guarded by the RDA, meaning you needed to fight them and free it, although at some point in my encounter it seemed the animal may have got shot because it was just dead inside the cage for me. It was definitely interesting playing as a Navi, especially in a first person perspective. A lot of the time it was quite easy to forget that you were playing one of the Avatar Navi people. This is purely because you're playing in first person. Whereas when you jump on your Ikran and start flying around, you get that third person camera and it feels so much more immersive like you're in the world of Pandora. And when you are on that Ikran, you feel absolutely giant with enemy helicopters and vehicles seeming quite small in comparison to you because as a Navi, you are a pretty big creature. 
So fighting human enemies is actually pretty interesting because they are a lot smaller than you. But it does make me wish that they overall went with a third person camera perspective for all of the gameplay, as I just feel it would be a bit more immersive and it would be nice to see your avatar character more often. Another thing that stands out to me was the gathering mini game that you would play when you were foraging for resources. You had to spin the analog stick and find the sweet spot in order to pull the fruit or the item off of what you were gathering and it would affect the rarity of the material. It did make me wonder how quickly would this mechanic get old. I think this is going to be a game that if you are a fan of the Far Cry series you're probably going to enjoy it quite a lot. There's definitely some crossover with Far Cry that I can see in this game. Particularly when it comes to exploring the map, hunting wildlife to upgrade yourself and craft things, I do see this being fairly similar to Far Cry, but with a very pretty avatar skin on it, and of course a completely different story that goes deeper into the avatar universe. It simply is too early to tell from my two hours of hands-on time, but what I would take away from this is that the world seems pretty big and dense with lots to explore and do, and a lot of verticality thanks to the Ikran flying mounts. There's definitely going to be a lot to see, explore, gather, tick off things on the map and all that kind of stuff that you would expect in a game like this. But when it comes to more nuanced things like how the story will pan out and how many hours are contained in the main story, exactly how these progression systems as well as the crafting system will evolve as you get more time into the game and can unlock more things, this is the stuff that we will have to wait and see in the full version of the game. But from my brief time playing and as a Avatar fan, I definitely did enjoy what I got to experience. I do stick by my idea that a third person perspective camera would add more immersion to the game and just make you feel more like you are a Navi in Pandora. And I'm definitely intrigued to see how the different progression systems in the game actually work as you get further and further, and how many hours there will be to experience within the title. But if you are a fan of other Ubisoft games, such as the Far Cry series, I think Frontiers of Pandora is going to be one that you just might enjoy.